Okay, welcome back, everyone. We uh, we started at 6 p.m. and then we we went into executive session for contract negotiations. So now we're back. Uh, okay, so at this point, can we stand for the pledge of allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next up is presentations. That's right. I have to move over there. I'll sit with you. Wait, 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 wait. All right, I'm going to ask somebody for help. Bring that over. Just slide. Watch the wires and nothing disconnects. Whoops, that's okay. Sorry, you got the short straw. That's great, that's great. Okay, so good evening. And tonight we're just going to give a brief a budget overview, the process, and where we are as of tonight. Um, as I always like to point out, um, the district operates with a strategic plan that was initiated back in 2015. We had a committee in 2022 to expand it. Um, everything that's done, all the decisions are based on um, individual department goals and objectives, building goals and objectives, and the budget development. So we have four pillars, achievement, opportunity, innovation, and connection. Every decision we make, including the budget process, is based on those four pillars. So I'd like to start out with what was in our initiatives for last budget year and where we are with them now. Um, as you can see, we um, had funding to support our literacy coach, which is in, we've hired and is working at both elementaries. Uh, we have an implemented new health curriculum at our middle and high school students. And we got new computers for our high school library. Uh, for student opportunities, we've uh, continued support and we've expanded our CTE around. We currently have 20 students uh, going to BOCES. We have ex started the NASA Community College concurrent enrollment. Five students are currently enrolled and we brought the AP capstone diploma. Additional student opportunities, we have an additional club, the Rock Orchestra, which is running this year. We have additional athletic programs and coaching staff. So we have a junior high school winter track. Um, we got an assistant coach for our varsity winter track. There was quite a bit of students um, involved, and this allows us to have more students at the proper supervision. And we had additional intramural programs. We have bowling that's supposed to start next week, and junior high boys uh, volleyball. In addition, we have our capital improvements. Um, this year, our capital improvements were our six elementary playgrounds. Um, so most of them are completed. We replaced the playground equipment, the kindergarten playground equipment, and the surfacing. The surfacing was the issue that came up over and over and over again um, from parents, community members, or PTA would always talk about the health and safety of the tire shreds we used. Um, a lot of dirt was in there, it wasn't getting cleaned. Some items that we would not want our students uh, seeing were in there. Um, and there really was no way to get a good clean and sanitation. So um, we kept trying to replace it, but it was an extremely um, high price tag. And when the federal stimulus funding came out, one of the first things we applied for was to have the surfacing replaced on the playground for, because it's a health and safety issue. So it fit perfectly, and we were able to do it without um, impacting the tax base. However, what we found out was when we did a closer look at our playgrounds, in order to put the surfacing <coughs> in, it didn't make sense to not replace the equipment that was at or beyond its life expectancy. So we went ahead and we replaced the kindergarten playground and surfacing, the swing set at center and its surfacing, the North Playground, um, I'm sorry, this is at rank three. It's like 
both houses at center. Um, at Rain, and then the playground was right by the basketball court on Rain Avenue. We did not replace that. That was a relatively new playground, but we did replace all of the surfaces. So on Rain Avenue, there is no more tire shreds. There is no more concern about the health and safety. Um, and that, that I thought was a great accomplishment, and it made many of our community members happy. Center Avenue, we've done the, the kindergarten playground and surfacing, and the playground by the railroad tracks for our older students and the surfacing. They're a little bit smaller, but the point of that was because the back playground um, by the parking lot is going to be much larger. So the money was moved to the back playground, which if you look at the back playground right now, it has a swing set, a couple of little pieces of equipment, I think a much larger um, set and a, a new swing set. So that is piece is waiting on um, the final grant that we got from the Kaminsky. So it's in its final stages. I've got it three quarters of the way through. As soon as they say yes from the state, state's a little behind, we will move forward with that, hopefully by the summer. But these were paid. The funding for these six playgrounds and all of the surfacing was only $70,000 on the Everything else was grant funding. We managed to get grants. We used the federal stimulus funding. So for $70,000, we replaced all the health and safety concerns of the community for the children, and we replaced six playgrounds. So that's a huge undertaking, and I'm proud that we were able to do that. So where are we? Budget development process. The first thing we do is a rollover budget. Try to feel like, where are we if we just take everything we have and we increase it based on contractual agreement? Salaries, of course, is the biggest one. So we have to move everybody up a step, add any increases in accordance with contract. Um, the employee and teacher's retirement system, again, we have an estimate uh, for the teacher's retirement system. That percentage has to be applied to the new salaries. So that always goes up unless the percentage goes down significantly. Health insurance increase, that's a big problem this year. Um, our average is 16.9% when you take into account the retirees, the individual, the active family and individual, and the retirees. It's a huge hit, much higher than we've seen, and I'll talk about that later. Flood insurance, we took a hit to flood insurance that we did not budget for. We were not notified until after the school year that our flood insurance, we were notified in June that they were going to drop us, we couldn't get insurance. We had a really hard time because of our location. Our flood insurance went up $225,000 for the current school year. I expect it's going to go even higher next year. Transportation increases is always based on the May CPI. Um, we do not have, um, obviously, the May CPI. Last year's May CPI was 6.3%. We expect it to be higher because we're trending higher this year than last year. Um, OC services increases, we usually get those percentages. <coughs> End of January, beginning of uh, February, that's not done yet. Out of district tuition increases is not, is not in there yet. Um, we started meeting with all of our administrators, our principals, the, our departments, to kind of feel for what are they looking for what have they in their budget and what are they looking to increase or how can they decrease? Right now, they've got pretty much flat budgets for most of the departments. Um, some of the buildings budgets went up a little bit because their enrollment, everything's based on enrollment with the building budgets. So some buildings went up because their enrollment went up, some went down because their enrollment went down. Then once we get all of this completed, we'll look at where we are with the CAA, which we should at least we work off the governor's proposal, it tends to be the bare minimum. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it stays flat. Once I know what that number is going to be, we will look at what we would like to add to the budget, what kind of enhancements. A lot of times our enhancements come with cuts. We reduce one area and we enhance in another area. So we'll be looking at that as well. Okay. Uh, and then we'll uh, develop a list of the proposed capital and technology projects. We have a certain budget line and we like to stay within that budget line. So what's the major budget balance? 
the governor's budget is the major one. Um, we expect that at the end of the month, we're supposed to be fully funded for foundation aid. I always say it, I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it. There's already chatter up there that that may not happen this year because of inflation. That would be a real hit to school districts all over the state. Um, we have four variables for the tax cap. We know it's going to be CPI because the CPI is way over 2% for the, for the 22, 20, 22 calendar year. So it's capped at 2%. There's also a factor called the tax-based growth factor that's based on construction and improvements to the community. That usually gives me another 2%, zero this year. And I'm hoping that that's a mistake, like it was back in 2016. But if not, that's it. There's no money coming from there either. Um, other factors, contractual salary costs we talked about, the pension increases, health insurance, utility costs. We have an increase for the utility costs. They're right now trending slightly over what we budgeted. Slightly, which I think is good because we didn't we didn't go crazy increasing, expecting some savings from our high school um, HVAC upgrades. And then, of course, there's the flood insurance that I spoke about. So what do we know? There's your health insurance. This is what makes budgeting difficult. We have no idea what's going to happen with some of the costs. They're out of our control. So you can see the health insurance increases, how it's going up and down. It's up at 14.91%. That's for your active family health insurance plan. The, um, when you take into account everybody, active, family, individual, retirees, over 65, one member under 65, two members over 65, it's at 16.02% increase. That's huge. TRS contribution rate, again, you can see this goes up. It works on a five-year average, so it's not like prior five, 10 years ago, it would spike up to 14 and then drop down to seven. Um, right now they're estimating nine and a half to 10%. Um, everybody says it's probably gonna be 10% this year because of uh, the hit to the stock market. TRS, the money is, is in the stocks. Um, and again, even if it's at 10%, like the current year it's 10.29, it's 10% of the new salaries. So you're not going down. And what do we not, what do we know about revenues? This is another area, it's difficult. Look at the tax cap. This is strictly the cap, not the levy. This is what, based on the formula, we're able to tax and collect from the taxpayers. And you can see it going up and down. The three gold bars are the three years that we have come under the tax cap in the district, especially the last year. The last year was 3.91, 3.81, and we came in at 0.9. Here's our state aid increases, and you can see. I mean, if you look at the 2017-18 school year, you look at the tax cap, and then you look at the increase of state aid, that was a tough year. It was a tough year. So this makes it awful, awfully difficult to project, especially when we're doing contract negotiations for multiple years. It's hard to know what's going to happen next year. I mean, our cap was 3.81. I don't think our cap's going to be anywhere near 3.81 this year. Last year, we taxed at a 0.93%, and we collected an additional $295,000 from taxpayers. A CPI cap for this year, we know is 2%. 2% on our tax levy is an extra $643,000 collected from the community. Health insurance increases $443,000. So that's a $200,000 difference. That means that everything else has to come from increased state. All your salary increases, transportation increases, all of it has to come from the state aid fund. So a lot relies on our state aid. I just like to talk about our financial accomplishments. This could very well change, but for the last, this is when I started in the 16th, 17th school year. And what we did is we came off of reserves. Reserves should be when you're having difficult financial times. 
It shouldn't be used to fund the ordinary expenses. It used to be used for that. We've decreased it all the way down. And right now we're using $100,000 technology reserves to fund our technology upgrades. My goal was to get rid of that last year. Um, then it was this year. And now I'm not sure, depending on what happens. So what we've done in the last several years is we've increased technology support in the operating budget where, where it's required. Um, we are not relying on $200,000 a year for technology to replace our hardware, but we have increased the amount of technology used in the school district. So it may sound like, oh, well, what did you do? You decreased it by 100. Well, I decreased it by 100, but the district has also increased our technology here in the district for the schools. Everybody's going to want to learn about devices. This device is available in every classroom, um, at the elementary level. So we have really come a long way in technology. We used to use reserves to cover uh, plant maintenance and capital projects. We don't annual capital projects, annual small things that need to be covered. So if you needed a new floor, or you, you need something minor that's $25,000, $30,000 for each different building, it came out of reserves. That really needs to be out of your operating budget. You're going to need capital improvements. And then we moved $2 million of fund balance um, to fund the HVHC upgrades that are going to take place this summer in both this building and rain so that we have upgraded HVAC in the entire building. Cleaner air, air conditioning, we get rid of all the window air conditioners, which use up a lot of electricity, and we don't do this. Um, our capital reserve fund, we were able to allocate $6.2 million um, a few years ago, over a few years, and put that towards our bond project to lower our bond costs. And we improved our bond rating to uh, reduce the cost of bond. And this is our budget discussions. I write subject to change because it can change. Um, I may be looking at expenditures before I'm looking at capital and technology because we may need to look at that area first. But this is the uh, anticipated budget discussions and the calendar. It's not really that clear, but. That's where we are right now. Hopefully on February 7th, we'll have a lot more information. Thank you, see. Questions to the board? I had a question regarding budget choice. Mm -hmm. um, based on all of the improvements that we did uh, with the bulkhead and everything like wrapping around the, the, the border perimeter mm -hmm. of the high school, yeah, or is there some the work that we've done? Thing. Has that helped reduce the overall cost of our current flood insurance? And then part two of the question is <clears throat> how do we bid that out, or how do we get a better rate to shop it around the way that one of us in the district would do in that situation? And I don't think we were to do that. We do. So, I mean, it seems like a tremendous, tremendous amount of money. Does it work the same as like a home where it has to be your utilities or at a certain height above sea level where you can possibly break civil engineering to get an elevation certificate? They, uh, everything's been moved like service service service. Service. All that. It's all the boiler, it's all that stuff at home. I don't know if you say that. They're aware of all the upgrades. Uh, when we did the uh, planking and the doors, that was all required. The mitigation was required in order to even get any kind of coverage by FEMA. That was millions of dollars. But FEMA covered it. We didn't pay for it. FEMA paid for it. Um, flood insurance is going through the roof everywhere. Uh, the 225 was a shock. It was a shock. Uh, but I'm not so sure it's not going to continue to rise. We are at risk here on the water. The other, the other thing was exactly the need to let, need to let it go. But how can, especially everything that we had done and supported by mm -hmm. the feds, right? The fact is that we just had the incident and we were unscathed. Nothing happened here. And that, that last incident, meanwhile, we, we uh, flooded out down at Bay Park, everywhere else in the building, as you know. Mm -hmm. So we need some kind of letter that would support the school system, all right, going forward to the governor saying how can this be conscionable yeah, you know a lot of us at bay who have 
receive federal money, state money, to make these upgrades, and now we're paying for it as a district. Yeah, so can we yeah, we'll look into that in sure, the letter and sure. then we'll talk about it in the work session? Yeah, but that, well, we're really in part to, or in addition to what you were just saying, maybe we try and hold hands with a couple of other districts that are similar size that are on the border, right? that may be in the same similar well, situation. Saying, well, we write our own letter, but yet maybe we write a joint letter with a number of districts and say, listen, we can't do with this in a small district like that. They can't say it. Oh, that's just great. Yes, if it's just in the district, I think, you know, yeah. we have to think differently because you have all these people with small beaches the same. Everybody that's on the water, everybody that's on the water, you can see what you're saying. It can't be part of it. It's a district where it's open. Good job. Yeah. See if you can get into the school. Huge. That was the increase. That was it. That was it. The bill. That was the increase that came in June after the budget was built. And it was, you know, and we had no choice. We're required to keep eleven million dollars excess flood insurance on this district. Eleven million dollars. And that's expensive. That's why the letter is so important. Yeah. We say we just had that tremendous storm or the trackway was on the border that was up against the, the coastline. Dirty yeah. trackway, we had zero problems. So we have to comply with that. Yeah. And I think that's just one strength of numbers. And we could find all the districts that really, I mean, I know Massapequa took a real hit, Long Beach took a real hit, and Lingener took a real hit, all when we had the Sandy. We all took the major hit, South Shore Schools. Um, and maybe we can do something together. I have to work on that. You know, we got to try something because. And who sets that $11 million number? FEMA. 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 The federal government. On yeah. Yeah. They pretty much said. You, you, and because we actually called to see if we had to keep the $11 million because when the price went up, you know, and, and they said, absolutely, you must have $11 million or we won't cover you. Oh, that was nice. So I got to keep $11 million on this, between this building and rain. Uh, or if I have $7 million, they said we're not covering you. If I didn't do that FEMA mitigation project, they weren't going to cover us. That's like... That's really fun, yeah. It's kind of being like hijacked. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's bad. I mean, even some houses that are not even close to the water are getting killed. You know, people want to insure you. Yeah, I just I know a well from when I lived on the other side of town. I had a certificate of elevation after saying it because I moved all my utilities up. If you were five feet above sea level, I think it was, you could have a civil engineer come in and then sign off that you are X amount above sea level, and then you, it's a reduced rate, you still have to But I, I just wonder if it's something like that. Well, I'll, I'll contact school. our agency and just see. They reduced it tremendously. Back then. And then I go to the dry side. Absolutely. Worth a try. Anything's worth a try. Yeah. We can't sustain. Putting twenty five thousand no, dollars okay. when our you know a cap is only six hundred for you know flood insurance and we haven't had a claim in years. The problem is we'll continue to keep raising it regardless of what goes on unless we have some strong numbers and reach out. Any other questions, concerns? Okay. Okay, thank you. Hopeful was on the news this afternoon saying that the school funding was up, so it's just on the news. Wow. See, I gotta watch the news before the meeting. <laughs> that it's the education is increasing 2.3 billion, not as much as the previous year, but he said foundation aid fully funded. See, it's going. It's going. See, it's real. Good night, Maureen. Good night. All right. So. Um, all right, at this time, are there any questions on the board agenda for next week's board? 
Okay. So at this time, I'd like to adjourn this meeting. We do have to go into executive session to finish our contract negotiations. So uh, I'd like to adjourn this meeting at 7.29. Good night, everyone.